Hey, puppy people. I know I ain't been here in a while. <laughs> I figured I'd knock one out here on doggies. Got on this. Uh, somebody put a link to a doggy video, and uh, it shows a CNI dog. Or I've been asked before if dogs can't see colors, how come they can be trained for CNI dogs on when to cross the street? So let's let's take a look at that a little bit. So here we have a dog at a very busy intersection, which I think is extremely irresponsible. I'm, I'm thinking this dog's a stray. And uh, he's just learned how to survive. But uh, at first, I was like, why do these girls leave their dogs? So let's take a look at this. <laughs> Warning, if you don't want to see a dog get hit by a car, you may not want to watch. I'm only kidding. A dog don't get hurt. Why didn't you tell us the dog was... He's not going to get hurt. Quit crying. <laughs> okay, light turned green, dog walked across the street. He didn't walk when it was red and cars were coming. If he can't see colors, Rick, how did he know the light turned green? Well, it depends. So if you look at a color spectrum of humans, we see a lot of different colors, which could be why we move to the top of the food chain and we're reproducing and we're living and we're able to breathe because we can tell when food's bad or different colors that are poisonous or how to read poisonous snakes, etc. Other animals aren't so fortunate. Now, a cat has a little bit of color. You can see they have, I think it's three cones in their retina. I'm not sure. Horses have much better night vision than uh, dogs, cats, or humans. But we're not on horses. We're on doggies. So here's a kitty cat vision, and here's no color vision. Now, dogs really aren't in the no color vision, although they're closer to no color vision than the cat. You can see a few colors, and there's various shades here to where the spectrum of a cat's vision is better than a dog. So comparing a human to a dog's vision, you see dogs can see yellow and blues, but they don't see dark blues, purples, greens, and reds. So... Now, again, people are going to say, well, how do you know you never look through a dog's eyes? They're, they're going by how the eye functions and from, a, you know, looking at eyes and doing tests on what dogs can see and they can't see. So our color spectrum is very different for a dog. And, you know, when we train our dogs to find people, you have them find them by three different ways. You have them find them by hearing, by sight, and by smell. And by far, a dog's smell is the best way to find somebody then hearing and vision is last i know i'm going back to cats but there's there's just a little bit of difference that cats can see you can notice at the bottom part here a little bit of color whereas humans sees the red roof and the bright green grass cats kind of see maybe an off color whereas a dog would see more grades and shades grays and shades of color and we used to train our dogs, we'd say dogs, and we used to trick our dogs and we'd get far away from them, and we would say stay, the dogs would be looking at us and we'd have the other person, handler, give a command, and both the dogs would listen. So two of us would walk far away, and when either handler gave a hand command, no voice, because the dog could recognize our voice. If we just gave a hand signal, even though we didn't change positions and the dogs watched us walk right away in front of them, if one handler gave a hand signal, both dogs would normally listen. And that's because once you get out of a dog's visionary area where he can kind of either smell you, hear you, or really stay close enough. That's why when you leave a dog in a car, they're like, everybody that comes out of the grocery store, they're jumping around <laughs> and they're getting all happy. Like, is that my dad? Is that my mom? Is that... I can't tell. I can't. So they get excited. And then the guy walks to a different car and they're like, darn, it's not mine. So if you watch a dog in a car, you'll notice sometimes, even if you're a stranger walking up a car, they, they're kind of looking at you with a little curiosity because they haven't really recognized you, unless you're totally different, you're talking or the wind's blowing and they smell you. And in this explanation, they talk about dogs saying, uh, you know, humans have red, blue, and green cones, why dogs' cones are yellow and blue. Well, if you look, 
at that earlier picture with the yellow and blue here, um, that means dogs will have a problem between your red and greens, but it depends on the color contrast because as the richness and color changes, the difference in the gray shading changes. So the dogs can tell it's a different color. It may be a darker gray or a lighter gray, but they can, you know, distinguish. And I think they did one study where they made cats in, in different colors and backgrounds. And when they made the cat real distinctly bright, bright red over a lighter color, the dogs could see them. But if they put a, a, a red over a green, they tended to blend in because they were both colors and the dogs couldn't see the cats. So th th through trial and error, they can kind of figure out. And I've had a lot of people tell me my dog can see color and I throw a red ball. And if I throw three balls, he always brings me to red one or his blue one's the favorite. Or, I, 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 I don't believe that all the science behind dogs' vision is wrong. And in this picture, it shows a human seeing the red, the green, the dark, the, the light red or orange fence and the yellow. And in the dog's vision, you see it kind of shaded out. And his best vision is right in front. Now, peripheral mono, uh, you know, whether he's got mono vision or binocular vision, dog's eyes are like predators. We, we can see this is more peripheral vision on a dog and not like a horse to where it's mono vision. A horse can see something different in this eye and something different in this eye. And, and they can use what's called monovision, one eye at a time. Dogs, like humans, we have binocular vision, but we have peripheral vision on the side. So these things tend to be shaded, not clear, but what's right in front of the dog is most clear. And, you know, like I said, when we were training dogs. Once a dog hears something, you will see him focus on it. And then if you get down, we used to get down right behind our dog's head, and you look right down the center of the dog's head, down his nose and his ears will focus in and even if the dog can't see it you'll be able to see what the dog is hearing or looking for because his ears will zero in so when you're talking about vision and color vision humans have color blindness and if you can't read the numbers the 8 here the 15 here the 29 there they give you these tests to see if you can read the numbers and if you can then they figure out what colors you are able to see and not able to see. Here we have 8, 45, and 73, I believe. So, uh, again, if you can't make out these colors, and, you know, this is important in a military if you're working around aircraft or anything that uses lights and darkness because a lot of times they'll use different colors to mean different things, and you have to have color vision in order to qualify for certain jobs, some jobs, I, I think I don't. I think you can still get in the military. I, maybe different branches have different rules. I don't know. But anyway, so understanding uh, uh, the eyes of an animal that you're working with is important. And when I say understanding the eyes, I'm not talking about what you see. I'm talking about what the animal sees, because if you don't understand how an animal sees, you can't help him in training or aid him and assist him in what he's looking for or how to ensure that what you're training is what you're actually training. Again, most predators' eyes both face forward. They don't face sideways. Most prey animals, their eyes face sideways to give them more of a 360 to view. Predators want to be able to focus on things they're hunting in front of them, which dogs are, which is why their eyes focus straight forward, and which is why they have binocular vision. Now, Dogs are really, really good at picking up movement. And, and that, that's a key thing when we were training our dogs to look for people. And that's why it's critical if you're moving to defeat a dog, if you're trying to move in on a dog or a place that's being guarded with dogs, if you move slow, the odds are the dog will not see you. He may hear you and he may smell you, but he's not going to see you unless you make a movement. You stand up, you squat, you run to a tree, you trip, you fall, you wave your hand, you, you swing your arm. A dog will pick you up if you're moving fast. If you're moving slow and very easy, a dog will not pick you up with his eyes. Like I said, he may hear you and he may smell you, 
But that's why I always say the dog's vision is the worst of their three senses for finding people. Nose is the best for smell, hearing is next, and then their eyes. So this is what a dog would see versus a human. A human would see bright green grass, changes in the dirt, the sand, the yellow colors, the white muzzle, the eyes, the ears. They would pick up all that, whereas a dog would see grays and shadows and darker areas and lighter areas. But things tend to blend in. The dark nose is good, but other things tend to blend in, which is why a lot of dogs get bit by snakes because they hear they don't really see, they can't make it out, and they go in to smell it, and then they get bit in the muzzle. And very common for dogs to be bit by snakes in the face. They're exploratory, they're checking it out, and they get curious, and they really can't make out color, so they don't know the difference between a poisonous, bright-colored snake and a non-colored, you know, non-poisonous snake. They just know something's moving, I can't really make it out, I'm going to try and get closer, I'm going to investigate it with my nose and with my ears, and then they get bit. So how many of you have thrown a ball for a dog before and they lose it? And you're like, it's right there. It's right there, dummy. You can't pick it up. If it's rolling and they're chasing it, they're more likely to see it because it's moving. And their visual acuity is much more based on movement than sitting still. Also, if you throw a blue ball in blue water, it's going to blend in and all be gray and the dog will lose it. Maybe a red ball in water or a white ball in water, which reflects light, the dog will find easier. However, if there's a lot of white caps and there's a lot of reflection off the water, white not, not, may not be good. So, and again, we can't test a dog to see if some dogs may be more or less better colorblind or less colorblind. So, it would depend on your dog on what color of ball and how you're doing it. But, again, uh, you know, eyes are important, again, to ensure when you're teaching a dog so you don't do like I tell people with horses, calling a dog stupid, dumb dog, you can't even find... You know, stupid dog won't even listen. I'm pointing right at it, and he won't even look. You need to understand what a dog sees or what an animal sees. So when the dog learns something, you don't think, aha, I just taught him something. When, in fact, the dog learns something totally different because he's not seeing the world as you see it. And so, Dr. Obvious, who may ask the question, how does the dog know when the light turns green or red or yellow if he can't see colors well as you can tell by these two pictures the dog may not see red or green but he can see brightness and he can also tell position of the lights now some cities have lights that go horizontal some have that go vertical when teaching dogs to read red lights so they know when to go and not to go you teach them the position of the light. The dog stops when the light on top is lit, and the dog goes when the bottom light is lit. You're not teaching them green. Somebody that doesn't understand that will say, well, my dog knows green because when the green light comes on, he goes. No, he doesn't. He's either learned through the colors because he was taught position. He's learned to watch other people. He's learned to listen now. They have a lot of stop signs or, or red lights have audio cues that tell you when to go two beeps don't go he's learned when the traffic stops or slows he learns when traffic stops and all these cars stop moving again dogs are all about association and they associate key factors in their environment as they're learning so being aware of their vision is one of those things that that i think is really lost in horse people that are training horses when they don't understand a horse vision how they spook, etc., and when you don't understand a dog's vision on what you're training him, when he loses things, when he loses a ball, when he can't find things, and you're calling him a stupid dog, when in fact, it's a stupid human that don't understand a dog. So no matter what your doggy's eyes look like, notice, know that they see things very differently than humans do, and when you can incorporate that into your training, you're going to get better results, you're going to get more refined results, and you're going to be actually teaching what you think you're teaching and not missing what the dog is actually learning. All right, so that's a little bit on doggy vision. We'll end that there.